Netflix is a genuine treasure trove when it comes to movies, and many of the platform's original productions are counted among the most exciting releases of the last few years. Here's a look at the 10 most-watched Netflix original movies, ranked according to their ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. In 2019, a stunning 83 million viewers tuned in to watch Michael Bay's streaming debut, Six Underground. The film's Rotten Tomatoes stands at 36%, but critics weren't really the intended audience to begin with, and the score actually places it squarely in the middle of Bay's filmography, review-wise. So if you're a fan of the director's trademark for netic action stylings, this will be right up your alley. It's a crowd-pleaser, to be sure. The plot centers on an elite group of mercenaries, who have faked their own deaths in order to carry out missions off the grid. Their assignment? Travel to the fictional land of Turkestan to replace the country's brutal dictator with his imprisoned brother. With its loud explosions, snappy action movie dialogue, and an unrelenting pace, Six Underground is without a doubt a prime cut Michael Bay production. And if that sounds like your kind of thing, then you're bound to find it a whole heap of fun. Hollywood power partners Mark Wahlberg and director Peter Berg have produced a number of great movies, including Lone Survivor, Deepwater Horizon, and Patriot's Day. Sadly, Spencer Confidential didn't quite earn the same rave reviews as those pictures. A 37% Rotten Tomatoes score didn't stop 85 million people from streaming this throwback cop movie, making it one of the platform's biggest ever hits. The movie is an adaptation of Robert B. Parker's popular Spencer novels, with Wahlberg stepping into the famous detective's shoes. Spencer is a cop who plays by his own rules, which doesn't play so well at a time when police brutality is under heightened scrutiny. The script is co-written by Oscar winner Brian Helgeland, and it gives Wahlberg plenty of excuses to kick ass with his partner and cut it up with his wise-cracking buddy. Meanwhile, a number of amusing cameos by famous faces help liven things up between all the action. Since it's based on just one book in the Spencer series, and considering the huge number of people who watched it, it's hard to imagine Wahlberg won't holster up for a sequel as the famous detective sometime soon. In 2014, Adam Sandler's Happy Madison Productions signed a lucrative deal with Netflix that has since produced some of the comedian's most widely viewed films. The most watched among them, Murder Mystery, brought in 83 million viewers, which in box office terms would make it a financial success on par with The Waterboy. It also earned pretty good reviews, relative to most Sandler comedies, earning a 44% score on Rotten Tomatoes. The film reunites Sandler with his Just Go With It co-star Jennifer Aniston, and it allows the Sandman to vacation in exotic locales with his best buds for the cause of comedy. The movie script is sharp and sprightly enough to keep everyone else as entertained as the people who made it. The premise? Sandler and Aniston are a couple traveling through Europe on their 15th wedding anniversary. On the plane, they meet a mysterious billionaire who invites them to party on his yacht with his elderly uncle. While at sea, however, the uncle is found killed with his own dagger, and Sandler and Aniston are the main suspects. Audrey. Yeah. Get the cocktail sauce. Released the same year as Sandler's critically acclaimed Uncut Gems, Murder Mystery finds the actor in the familiarly goofy territory lots of fans want to see from the funny man. For that reason alone, it's perhaps no mystery why so many people tuned in. George Clooney's sci-fi epic, The Midnight Sky, earned a 50% Rotten Tomatoes score. Critics noticed that the movie has more than a few things going for it, bringing in 72 million viewers and earning an Oscar nomination for its visual effects. Clooney stars as Augustine, a dying scientist stranded on an Earth that has been ravaged by an unseen disaster. Left alone at a research facility in the Arctic, he attempts to warn off any spaceships on their way back to the desolated planet. When he finds himself unable to reach the incoming crew of the Aether, Augustine travels across the frozen tundra to warn them, but the ship's crew are having a few problems of their own. The two halves of the midnight sky really come together in a third-act twist that links an emotional through-line between them. Along with the story, the technical aspects of the film are unarguably stunning, with Martin Rua's cinematography to Alexander Desplat's heartbreaking score. 
As the summer of 2020 dragged on, it became increasingly clear that the pandemic would keep theaters closed. So naturally, audiences increasingly turned to streaming services to get their blockbuster kicks. It's little wonder, then, that 75 million people watched the high-concept action thriller Project Power when it dropped on Netflix that August. The movie also netted a 61% Rotten Tomatoes rating. In an era dominated by mainstream comic book movies, Project Power imagines a stranger scenario, one in which anyone can become a superhero by taking an experimental drug. The catch? The effects only last for five minutes, and there's no telling what superpower you might gain, or whether you'll use it for good or evil. Chaos predictably ensues when the drug hits the streets of New Orleans, so teenager Robin teams up with a local cop and an ex-soldier to track down the evil pharmaceutical company who made it. As the critics will tell you, the true power of this film comes from its impressive performances and thrilling action sequences, and there's still plenty of room to add more to the intriguing story in a sequel. It seems like only yesterday that the Bird Box Challenge was sweeping the nation, forcing Netflix to issue a public plea for people to stop walking around while blindfolded. Released during the holiday season of 2018, this movie does for sight what A Quiet Place did for sound. And just like that horror hit, Bird Box was a sensation, bringing in a total of 89 million viewers and a 63% Rotten Tomatoes score. Adapted from the novel by Josh Mallerman, the movie stars Sandra Bullock as Mallory, an expectant mother who fears of becoming a parent are quickly set aside for an even greater terror. To reveal much more would spoil the movie's fascinating premise, but it's probably fair to say that the scene in which Mallory and her children make their way through the woods is among the most iconic horror sequences of the last few years. Susanna Bier creates a constant sense of dread and tension throughout Bird Box, relying on good old-fashioned suspense and atmosphere over flashy special effects. She also does a good job with her ensemble, eliciting performances that keep you invested in the human story at the heart of it all. With 99 million viewers, Extraction is the most watched film in Netflix's history, and there's certainly a good reason for that. The film hit the streaming site in April 2020, just as the coronavirus pandemic was forcing the closure of movie theaters across the country. The movie earned a 67% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and the high viewership was more than enough to justify a sequel, and perhaps even a franchise. Directed by Sam Hargrave from a script by Joe Russo, Extraction has got all the trappings of a whiz-bang action blockbuster. Chris Hemsworth stars as Tyler Rake, a mercenary tasked with rescuing the son of an imprisoned Indian crime lord who's been kidnapped by his father's rivals. Extraction's action is its best quality, being masterfully directed by Hargrave, who had previously worked as a stunt coordinator on Hemsworth's various Marvel Cinematic Universe films. He also makes the most out of the film's R rating, spilling blood by the bucketful and bringing a real intensity to the film's action sequences. What more could you want from a punchy lockdown blockbuster? Zack Snyder dominated the streaming services in early 2021, shortly after his four-hour director's cut of Justice League hit HBO Max. The director released the grisly horror flick Army of the Dead on Netflix. It didn't take long for Army of the Dead to crack the streamer's top 10 most viewed films, racking in a staggering 72 million viewers. Plus, the movie's 68% Rotten Tomatoes score places it in the top half of Snyder's filmography from a critical standpoint. Considering Snyder's first film was a remake of George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, it's only fitting that he would one day return to the zombie genre. Army of the Dead is a sly hybrid of horror and heist movies, following a mercenary who is tasked with recovering $200 million from a casino vault in a zombie-infested Las Vegas before the military nukes the city off the map. Snyder Snyder seems to paint the screen with blood in this movie, making the most of his hard R rating. The supporting cast helps liven things up too, most notably Tig Nataro as one of lead actor Dave Bautista's Gang of Thieves. 100% I'm in, yeah. You don't want to know, you know, the risks or why would I want to know the risks? For fans of Snyder and his flashy, stylized type of movie, it really doesn't get much better than this. 
One of the surprise hits of the pandemic summer was The Old Guard, which hit Netflix in July 2020. All in all, 78 million viewers tuned in, with interest undoubtedly piqued by the movie's sterling 80% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Charlize Theron stars as Andy, the immortal leader of an elite squad of mercenaries. Together with her brothers in arms, Andy travels the globe protecting mortals, and along the way, picks up a soldier who discovers that she too is unable to die. In adapting writer Greg Rutka and artist Leandro Fernandez's graphic novel, director Gina Prince by The Wood infuses the superhero genre with the sublime passions of her previous films. What's really special about The Old Guard is the way in which Prince by The Wood so deftly balances the movie's more emotional scenes with its action sequences. Those elements work in perfect harmony with Theron who brings plenty of emotional heft to her performance, and once again, proves herself to be an apt action star. At a time when Marvel and DC have taken great pains to create interconnected sagas geared towards mass consumption, the old guard is proof that an original vision can break through and find a mass audience to boot. The Netflix smash hit Enola Holmes raked in 76 million viewers during the fall of 2020. It's also one of the platform's most critically acclaimed titles, with a certified fresh 91% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Millie Bobby Brown plays Enola Holmes, a teenage sleuth who's following in the footsteps of her famous older sibling, Sherlock. While Sherlock is happy to encourage her sleuthing, her other brother, Mycroft, thinks she'd be better placed learning etiquette at finishing school. I don't want a husband. And that is another thing you need to have educated out of you. When her mother goes missing, however, it's up to Enola to track her down, deciphering clues from a variety of birthday presents she left behind. Her investigation uncovers a vast conspiracy revolving around a young aristocrat who's similarly trying to break free of the societal restraints placed upon him. It's not difficult to see why this was such a hit. Enola Holmes is just dangerous and droll enough to have some real edge, while providing teenage viewers with an uplifting girl power message. Considering it's based on just one book from Nancy Springer's popular young adult series, it's also safe to say the adventures of Enola Holmes are far from finished. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.